talking about DeVries. <laughs> I've seen some or DeVries. I'll never quit saying DeVries, will I? Um, and his name's Darren, at, by the way. I've been saying his first name wrong. It's Darren, Darren, yeah. <laughs> I've been saying Darian. It's not Same here. Darren. So I'm going yeah. to correct that. But anyway, I didn't want I didn't want to interrupt you. That's all right, man. So um, should have probably had articles ready to go, but um, obviously the entire roster has gone to the transfer portal today. If you're not aware, excuse me, of that, at right, uh, who is a 6'1", 170-pound guard. He started out in California. He's another one of these great Division II finds by, by Darren DeVries. And this kid came in, gave Washington State 20, averaged right around 15 points a game. He is a bucket, walking bucket, great pull-up mid-game. Mid like, he is that, he's that guy that comes off that top screen at the top of the key and pulls it up at the elbow. And he's really good with it. Uh, he's also got, got the great. He's got a great step back game. Uh, he is a little bit on the smaller side, so in the paint, he can finish and finish well. But he's going to have to get a little stronger to be able to, in my opinion, in the Big Twelve. Uh, you, then you move on. Obviously, Tucker DeVries is uh, an NBA prospect, guys. He was a four-star player. Uh, he would have went anywhere in the country he wanted to go out of high school. He chose to go with his dad, obviously. No surprise there. So this is a 6'7", Luka Doncic-type player without the passing ability. He's not as good as a passer. But he's 6'7". He can really score it, guys. He averaged 21 a game. Uh, we're talking about a guy in the Big 12. You're looking at anywhere from 17 to a game. I, you know, I always knock a few points off. But I wouldn't be surprised to see him get around that number for us this year. Um, defense, not his specialty, but it's always something you can get better at. Uh, as we know, uh, DeVries plays the pack line defense, which is what Tony Bennett plays, which is what, uh, you know, Sean Miller plays at Xavier, which is they go under screens, they pack in the paint, uh, and, and they, and it's all about helping in recovery defense. Uh, nobody gets inside the paint, cut, contest all shots. They run a five-out motion offense on the break, which is really hard to explain, but I, I have some videos that maybe we'll have to go over someday. But but basically the way they work on it is they make certain calls. They line up three guys. They basically do the figure-eight drill with three guys, and about halfway down the court they make certain calls and tell them which way to go at the very last minute, and then they have to think on the fly and do it, similar to you would, the way you would in the break. And, and then finally – um, I mentioned at right, mentioned Tucker DeVries, uh, uh, and then the, oh, Kevin Overton, the true freshman who was just a find, an absolute find, six foot five, 11 points a game as a freshman. He's going to have a lot of suitors, but the word on the street is all three of these guys are on their way to West Virginia. We'll see if it happens because I know how the portal works, Coos. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, has, has Tucker DeVries officially entered the portal yet? No, but he – I mean, you heard Brad House say it last night on three I know, but it, I'm <laughs> a little – it's a little weird that he's the one that hasn't entered yet and everybody else has. You know? Right. Well, I mean, it, it does, maybe the paperwork wasn't filed yet, but, well, I mean, or who knows, you know? Yeah, I'm a little – I ain't going to lie. I'm a he's little, got a girlfriend. I'm, I'm a little concerned <laughs> about it. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, maybe he decides not to do it. I don't know. I'd be shocked. It says West Virginia found their guy, and it seems like everyone is pretty. This is from HillWestVirginia.com. Uh, pretty happy about it in Morgantown. Not only does this hire bring an experiencing successful coach to the program, but it can also bring players from his previously successful program. Dar Dar Darren DeVries is coming to West Virginia from a direct program that has six straight seasons of 20 or more wins. Uh, let's get down here. Okay, here's the talks about the players. You got Tucker DeVries expected to join the, the roster. Um, you've got, uh, see who else did he talk about? Uh, yeah, well, but basically the guys you mentioned, he, he mentions right in here in the article. Um, Overton Drake's at and right. Yeah. Yeah. Over, I don't know if Overton's, let me see. We're doing this on they the all fly, went at different times. They yeah, all went at, at different times. Today, right. So, yep. Right. Here's rights right up. Um, he was the first to do so after the announcement of DeVries heading to West Virginia. 
The timing seems to make it seem like Wright wants to follow his former head coach. Wright would be coming as a senior at West Virginia, the six foot one guard, and it could could be his third school in three years. Typically, transferring three times in three years is not common, but with the transfer portal, it is seen more often than not. In his one season with the Bulldogs, Wright started every game for DeVries and averaged 14.1 points per game, 2.3 rebounds per game, and shot 45.8% from the floor and 40.6% from behind the arc. Outside shooting was a problem for the Mountaineers this season, and outside shooting, other than battle, is something West Virginia desperately needs. Um, well, I'm excited about Overton. They needed they needed battles leaving, so I'm not sure why a battle was included in that phrase there. But uh, anyway, right. No. Kevin Over Kevin Overton, was, you there know, he Paul is. Mentioned uh, as a freshman, Overton played and started in every game at Drake. He averages 11.3 points, 3.3 rebounds, and shoots 44%, 44% from the floor, 24.6% from behind the, beyond the arc. Kobe Garland uh, wasn't a starter for DeVries except for two games, but he came off the bench and played an average of 19.7 minutes. He don't have he don't have you know gaudy numbers or anything, 5.7 points, 2.2 assists. I don't look for all these guys to come to West Virginia. Uh more than likely. The other little point guard, Coos, is another kid to what I say kid, he's a man, but another one to watch out for. Mm-hmm. Uh, very similar to Kirk Carissa. Um, not as dynamic, in my opinion. He's a little smaller. Mm-hmm. Do you remember him? He, he, I, I don't mean this in any bad way, but he, he's kind of got like a, uh, maybe like a Jewish or, or Armenian kind of look to him. Really dark hair, really long hair. Um, he was good. I mean, he really had a nice touch from outside. He's small for the Big 12. It's one thing I worry about here. You know, I, I think these guys can be great for continuity. And listen, these guys won a bunch of games in Washington State, the way they were constructed this year, mm-hmm. is about as good for, as the top half of the Big 12. You know, and it's a great comparison because that a ton of length and athleticism on defense. So I think you can compare that backcourt and what they did to Washington State and how they played against them. Now, over the course of a season, completely different story. Yeah. But I, I, I really do believe that the, the, the guards at or at Drake can play at the Big Twelve level. Uh, they they do have they did have a big guy that pissed me. A lot of people think can transfer as well. I just I don't know. How do you how would you guys feel about the entire Drake team transferred over? that got knocked out basically in the first round of the tournament. Um, you know, I, I mean, obviously there are some pieces here already. I get, I, we have to see what else is added. I'm not saying I'm not excited. It's definitely a step up over, over, up over where we were. Um, but I just think, you know, I'd like to just kind of grab three or four of those guys that are really good and then kind of go another direction, you know, maybe. No, I but, agree. You know, I, I don't – I don't think he'll bring everybody to West Virginia. I mean, I'm sure uh, DeVries is a good enough coach and is, you know, he, he's seen enough power five basketball to know, hey, you know, this guy's a fit, yeah. this guy's not, you know. Uh, Got to scale guy, it up. Yeah, and I'm sure he knows that. I mean, you know, obviously his son Tucker is going to be good enough to play it at the power five level. Um, Overton probably is, is good enough. And, and then right, you know, the other guys, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but, but, again, that's – I trust his coach and his staff to make the right call. And, uh, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice to have. I'd like to see, just like Coach Kellogg did with the women's team, he had, you know, six or seven girls who stayed on from last year's team. He had several that he, he brought in, you know, he had one or two that he brought over from Stephen F. Austin from his previous stop. Jordan Harrison, the point guard, being one of those who happens to be my favorite player <coughs> on the team, and he combined that with some transfers he got from other location, other schools. So I mean, he had a mixture, and I think I look for Devries to do something similar. He'll probably try to keep as many of the current guys as he can, uh, yeah, and, and and that he feels as a fit, like maybe Kerr and uh, you know a few others, uh, and then he'll combine that with three or four guys from Drake, and then he'll go out and get some guys from some other lo- other places. That's that's how I think he'll do it, uh, and I think it's a good mixture, you know. I'm telling you, what Noah Farrakhan is another one, guys. Yeah, I, I know he was hit and miss last year, but an offense like this is so well suited to him and Kirk both, but Noah especially because it's predicated on obviously 
you can run it a couple different ways, but it's basically four week four. Listen, I watched this practice videos today for hours. That's why I'm able to rattle all this off. But they basically play four guys around the wing, one big guy that flashes up to the high post and different spots around around the low post area. Uh, and they fit it into their different gaps and try to get shots off. They have cuts off of that. Uh, and sometimes they'll throw another point forward, kind of like Quinn Slazinski in there. Mm -hmm. So for extra rebounding, Overton played that role a lot for them this year, even though he's only 6'5". Uh, but it's a really fun offense. But what it allows is really quick, fast, and explosive players like Noah Farrakhan really excel. Like if Joe Toussaint would have excelled in this offense because you can really get to the cup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chris Mitchell brings up a good point here with this comment. He says, being small a couple tourney games is one thing. Being small the whole Big 12 schedule will be tough. Look how Battle struggled with the size and physicality adjustment this year. Yeah, that's that's fair. And that's why I would like to see, you know, we definitely they definitely need some bigs on the team. He, he's not small, though, <clears throat> Chris. You know, he's 6'4". I mean, I get what you're saying. Your point just, stands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your point stands. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I didn't mean the to weight room. Off. No, that's okay. The weight room. Jay, Jay brings up a good point. He says they just got to hit the weight room, and that's at the end of the day, that's right. what it boils down to. Um, Matthew says he just wants to freeze right in Overton. Drumwolf sixty two <laughs> says take as many as we can get because they already know his system. Right. So uh, we appreciate you guys answering the question. Uh, Timothy Green says, please like and subscribe. We like that comment. Uh, back to the DeVries conversation. Uh, KF says one would think that DeVries would go after a center or two as high priority. And I think he will. I, I think he will. I mean, obviously, Jesse's going to be gone from West Virginia, so he's going to need somebody. Uh, and some, Nick, if he decides to come back, he's not a true five. He's really more of a four. Yeah. So I'd like to see him go out and get a true five. Actually, a couple of them. You need more than one. As we saw this year. Uh, <laughs> Frederico's in the portal. He is. Fetty. He wouldn't be a bad. He wouldn't be bad. Um, uh, as a backup type player, I mean, mm -hmm. he could start, but I, I wouldn't really. He's he's on the low end, you know. He's like a six points a game type player, but yeah. great defense. Yeah. Yep. Um. But anyway, but yeah, keep your eyes out, guys. Look. Ethan Bach and, and his team over at the Portal Report are constantly monitoring the transfer portal. They know who's in, who's out. Uh, so Ethan and Ethan's always posting stuff on X about you know new updates and things like that. So keep an eye out on 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 X for Ethan Bach's account. He'll keep you updated, as well as you know pretty much anybody who's following college basketball in West Virginia will do the same. Who's he? Who are you talking about, Duke Chuck? Just curious. Everybody's always going to join somebody in South Carolina when you're in here, bud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who, uh, who are you talking about, Chuck? We would like to know because I'm not sure who you're referring to there. Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. The view is on the way up. Drum Wolf, thank you for the 999 Super Chat, my man. We appreciate the support. He said Federico. Oh, okay. okay, yeah. I didn't know he had a brother in South Carolina. That's interesting. I wonder why his parents – I mean, maybe it's a traditional thing, but why did he name him the same name twice? Federico, Federico. That's <laughs> they call him those, Betty. Well, a lot of those uh, – you know. some of those foreign countries do that. It's, I, don't know, I don't know what the reason is. I mean, a cook, a cook, same thing. Then that wasn't his whole name, though. I mean, he, his name was actually pretty long is my understanding. But that's just Yeah, I look at it one time. It's like Akakalonga. It was crazy. Yeah. It was a long one. Drum Wolf, I appreciate the support, brother. Really yeah, do. It means a lot, man. It really does. They're definitely on the way up. It's it's you know, it's an exciting time to be a Mountaineer fan right now. I mean, it really is. We finally got some positive news around the basketball program. Football team, spring practice started today. A lot of positives around the football program. The women's team, you know, even though they lost tonight, they fought hard. They look good. They're on the national scene now. They're they're competitive, making noise in the Big 12. Baseball team's doing okay. Uh, finished top 25 in wrestling, for those of you who care about that. Uh, first time in many years. Got two All-Americans. So, I mean, 
made it to the Final Four in soccer. Uh, rifle team still competing for national titles, if, for those who care about that kind of stuff. But, I mean, it's just um, – West Virginia athletics is in a good spot right now, I think. Now, obviously, we got to see the proof is in the pudding, as they say, with basketball. But I'm really, really confident yeah. that Darren DeVries is the right guy to lead his program. I think he's going to be a cultural fit. I think he'll embrace the state. I think the state will embrace him. I think they already have to a degree. I'm really looking forward yeah. to his press conference on Thursday. I cannot wait to hear him talk, hear him address the fan base and the and the, and the players. And um, I'll tell you what will tell us a lot, too, probably is – uh, well, I don't know. I don't know if we. I don't want to read too much into it, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how many guys that are currently on the team hang around once they have a chance to meet him. Great point. Just like That's the women did. I mean, when they brought Kellogg in, everybody you, you, we assumed that a lot of the ladies would would leave that that went to the NCAA tournament a year ago. That didn't happen because they they met Coach Kellogg and they really liked what he had to say. They trusted him and they stayed and hung around for him, and uh, you know. Good things are happening. Well, you know, outside of Kerr, and probably a couple guys on this roster, you're you're you know, you're moving probably down at least to the to the to like the the Big East or the you know the Sun Belt ACC AAC. Uh, a lot of these guys aren't moving up or 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 laterally based off the way the season. Went. It's just nobody had a good year really outside of a couple players. So there's nothing great, you know, and it, so I think he's got a shot to keep a lot of players. You know, Kirk could go wherever he wanted still. He would still have power five opportunities. <clears throat> I think Barracon would too, but uh, maybe Slaz. But outside of that, if he gets cleared, I don't know. I'm probably missing somebody, but I think the other guys would be cause, because maybe, of maybe maybe over. Maybe. 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 Yeah. Michael Williams says, hello there, you two juicy honey buns. I actually like honey buns, believe it or not. One of my favorite desserts. <laughs> they, uh, I, a lot of you guys know I have a, a background like I do. I'm in recovery. I talk about it all the time, very open about it. Um, I'll say all that to say, uh, you know, people that are in recovery at one point in time, they have a certain kind of background and, uh, when I was when I was uh, away one time, we used to make these things called sugar rushes, and they're this <laughs> this is not good for you. But it's two honey buns, iced honey buns. It's got peanut butter on it, layered with the, name a couple different candy bars and uh, Oreos on top of peanut butter, and then smacked on another honey bun. And then uh, microwaved, and then uh, you can get some like vanilla extract from the kitchen and uh, put it in some flour and make a little drizzle out of it. I mean, it's just it gets bad. Uh, Sounds pretty good, actually. <laughs> it's really it's really good, but it's like you're like, what am I doing to myself like, here? You it's know? Like di- diabetes in one meal, one snack. Yeah, yeah. We oh, we called it the uh, the Wilford Wilford Brimley Wilford Express. Brimley. Diabetes. Yeah. Remember, yeah. used to say diabetes. If you got diabetes like me, oh man, that's a good story. Uh, cool story, man. <clears throat> See, what are the comments we got here, guys? Uh, <laughs> Drummle says you're making him hungry. My bad, man. Timothy says he's starved to death now. I got some homemade chicken and dumplings in there I made uh, yesterday. KF says, honestly, no slight to our current players. We need to upgrade for most of them. Timothy says he's already looking forward to next year. Markets and Moto says he thinks Ren Becker is possibly to be the greatest hire in WVU history. I think he said that yesterday too, didn't he? Or somebody did. I think it was him, yeah. Yep, Curtis D says he wants to see the women's team get a good-sized big for next year. You know, the big they got, Eric Babu, she didn't even play tonight. I guess they didn't figure she was a good matchup for for uh, Iowa. Yeah, and, and Blackston uh, is she was in foul. She's draw. pretty long. She's long and lanky, but she really can shoot it, you know. Uh, but you know, she just kind of 
obviously there are other bigs out there, you know. You see what UConn's got, teams like that. I'd like to see WVU get, get a big like those teams have. Absolutely. Also, love to see the men's team get another Jesse Edwards. Be great. Yeah, really. But if these Drake get another thing that you got to think, guys, if these Drake guys come outside of Tucker, you have to assume that he's going to get a sizable NIL deal. Uh, just because he's coming with his dad doesn't mean he don't deserve that. So I don't know. You know, Brad Hal said this. If he was on the open market, he would be a top five portal player. So that's how good he is. Like, Brad knows. You know what I mean? Brad Howe is as knowledgeable about all this as anybody. I have a lot of respect for how he looks at the game and breaks it down. Uh, it is very analytical sometimes, but uh, he was just talking about DeVries, DeVries as a player. Uh, and looking at his tape today, offensively, he is extremely – he'd be the best offensive player we've had in a long time. It better than Eric Stevenson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, CRT, as Curtis says, the CRT is supposedly getting donations pretty good after the hiring of DeVries. Uh, KF says, I was looking at the men's portal top 25 list. There are a lot of centers on there. And uh, Jacob Yoho says, <laughs> Sorry, I got something in my throat. Jacob's always got uh, something like this to say. I like it. Jacob Yoho, he says, how do you know they did not put Tucker's money in with his dad's behind closed doors? Uh, the the guys that are at the university right now, Rick Baker, Gordon Gee, I, I, would, I, I honestly would be surprised if they did something like that. Um, I don't, unless it's commonplace and we don't know about it because that would be really illegal and they're like really by the book kind of guys. I know you're probably not being a hundred percent serious, but um, I can certainly, I, I wouldn't be mad about it. <laughs> Gamecock Chuck. Thank you, man. Thanks for hopping in and uh, everybody go, ke- go check out Gamecock Chuck's channel. He covers South Carolina Gamecock sports. Does a lot of really good stuff on a, uh, you want, you talk about women's women's basketball matters in South Carolina, man. His South Carolina women's content blows up on YouTube. So go check out Gamecock Chuck. Covers all South Carolina uh, sports for the most part. Hey, Brendan. Uh, what's up, Brendan? Um, yeah, Chris Mitchell says hopefully his dad gives him an allowance so we can keep him <laughs> keep the NIL for other guys. Hey, pay him NIL money, man. Whatever it takes. Yep. But uh, I still – I ain't going to lie. I'm a little bit nervous because, to me, he would have been the first one to hit the port if he was coming. But uh, – so I'm a little bit nervous that he hadn't yet. Maybe there was just some paperwork. Maybe the paperwork takes a little longer for some guys than it does others. For Maybe there's a maybe there's an academic thing he's got to work out as far as what classes he can transfer and all that. You know, all that stuff matters in my, too. In my opinion, the only thing that can go wrong is that girlfriend situation. You know, uh, mm-hmm. like if you don't know, his girlfriend plays on the softball team. I said it last night. She's a very physically attractive girl, so which is not surprising, being who he is. Uh, it'd be hard to leave. You know, I get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but at the same time, uh, I, I was speaking with somebody the Iowa Press today. I forgot to mention this, and he was already thinking about transferring to Creighton, uh, even if his dad stayed at Drake for another year hmm. uh, so that he can get some more national exposure um, because he needs it, obviously, for his profile, NBA profile. So uh, I think this is a pretty much – it's a no, it's a no-brainer move for him in his career to think that – some listen, I've made some bad choices over women in my life, but to think that he would do that, you know, give, give up this year at the, at the, at the best level, not the next level, the best level, the Big 12, to stay in the Missouri Valley would be dangerous to his career. Well, who's to say he doesn't end up going to Creighton anyway? Uh, that would oh, be a that's, shocker. That's a possibility. Creighton's in the Big East. They get some national attention. You're just you're just pessimistic. It's all right. <laughs> I'm just being serious. Maybe he doesn't want to – maybe he wants to see what it's like to play for somebody other than his dad, you know? 
I mean, Tony Caridi, Brad Howe, and everybody has already said that they've heard him say, his dad say he was going with him. Uh, that's like as good as you can get, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I, you I, heard, did you listen to the three guys episode? I, I didn't. I, only one I heard was the one immediately after the, the announcement. I didn't hear the one today. They said it in both. Uh, yeah. I heard even one, the one last night. You know, yeah, I heard, I heard that. things can change though. I'm not saying they can't change. I mean, it's, I don't have an inside source on this. Right. So. And, K- and KF makes a good point. Maybe he's just going to wait until his dad does his press conference. You know, they've got to be careful that they don't get in trouble for – Exactly, have, that they, too. They, they don't want there to look like there was tampering going on or anything. So maybe he wants to wait a while. Maybe they figure if he's the first one to jump in, it looks suspicious. Yeah, ESPN said he is too. That's right, Luke. So uh, maybe he doesn't want it to look suspicious, you know. So he's well, I, I think we, I was talking to somebody about this earlier today, Coos. I don't think it's even. I don't think it is tampering if it's your dad. I, I truly really? think there's a rule out there that if it's your dad, which or, or some kind of exception out there, that if it's your family member that's the coach or your dad, there can't be tampering in that situation. It's your dad, you know. Uh, we'll have to see. The other players, though. Big, big, different story. Uh, but you would think those guys have won two Missouri Valley championships together. That 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 backcourt. Yeah. They, God, you know they want to do it on the Big Twelve stage. What a story yep. that would be. Yep. And we're going to be here to tell it to you. Um. Speaking of Marshall. Uh, Daniel Daniel agrees with you. How can it be tampering when it's his dad? Right. Um, D'Antoni was let go at Marshall today. Did, did you see that? I did. Yeah. They promoted I, an assistant. They did already? Yes. Interim or full time? I didn't see. I, I was just told. Okay. So I didn't get to see. Uh, so that's not an actual fact because I was told, but I haven't fact checked it. But I got you. And somebody would know, you know. So yeah. But uh, uh, some people have mentioned Huggins for that job. I thought I think that's might have where you've been going. I personally don't think that he would even sniff that job if it was offered to him, because it would be unless he's looking to stab West Virginia University in the back. Uh, and maybe I'm being too harsh here. But tell me if I if you disagree. But Marshall is right there with Pitt, right? In Virginia Tech, to me personally, but I grew up in this area. In that, area, and I I live in that area, you know. I mean, it's a little it means a little more to me. I don't know. I hate Marshall. I love telling my people. That, I love, everybody around me is a Marshall fan, you know. So I love telling them twelve and up. I love it. I love telling them we beat them in the tournament, beat their best player they've ever had in the tournament. I love it. So, you know, if Huggins went to Marshall to be, to be the ultimate slap in the face, but I would be, I would be there to watch probably because yeah. it's 10 minutes from my house. Yeah. Uh, I think your mic's dying, Paul. Uh, it is dead. But, uh, but anyway, uh, I, I don't really, I, I don't, I, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm trying to think how to say this. I don't have as much animosity toward Marshall as I do like um, as I do like uh, Pitt or Virginia Tech or some of those other schools. I actually I actually cheer for Marshall when they're not playing West Virginia, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't watch them a lot. I'm not passionate about them or anything like that. I just um, – but I don't really have that same animosity. Now, I get into it with their fan base quite a bit. Um Daniel Sargent, and then I think someone else earlier said it was a full-time contract. Todd Withrow, thanks for that information. Um, in Oklahoma State, I saw uh, early, early, earlier Curtis, Josh Shirts. I saw one report that said Josh Shirts was maybe the guy they had kind of targeted for that job. So, it'll – what about Josh Shirts for Louisville? Yeah. Ah, okay. They're looking at him too. Wow. 
I'm sure Louisville fans aren't happy about it. Uh, can, can you get? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, uh, I, I just know that he's. They're talking about him as a as yeah. a uh, possibility. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, I think Oklahoma State thought Danny Sprinkle was going to be their guy too. And he went to Washington. Right. So Oklahoma State really lost out bad this round of Louisville too. Somehow we've done better than they have in this coaching cycle. So all those people out there that said that West Virginia was a worse job than Oklahoma State uh, and Louisville, which we know we're not better than Louisville with their Louisville. But Oklahoma State, I, I was debating that one, you know. So um, at the end of the day, it looks like we were, at least in this case. Yep. Daniel Sargent, well, says, he's a 99.4% with his women's bracket. Congratulations, my man. That's awesome. <laughs> Somebody said, shut up, Daniel. <laughs> that's funny Big Aaron says that's Ren Baker magic man I hope so and I hope and I hope he stays for a long time man I really do I worry that when Gee leaves he'll leave too but maybe not. I mean I'm sure he knew coming in that Gee wasn't going to be around forever so if not, he wasn't paying attention. You know what I mean? You don't you don't go to work for a guy who's 77, 78 years old and expect you know. <laughs> oh yeah, listen, we know he's the short timer here if the right job opens up. Yeah. Anything out his neck of the woods, like surprised he didn't do the Missouri Missouri job. Don't know how if he was offered the job there or not. Um the, as we know, their board of governors is like apparently one of the worst to work for in all college sports. So maybe that has something to do with it. He had already worked there in the past that knows that. Mm -hmm. But uh, outside of that, you know, if you get an Oklahoma State, Oklahoma opening, uh, Texas Tech, anything like that, anything out that way, uh, he's going to be a top candidate for all the jobs that open. But anything out that way specifically, good luck. It's going to be tough to keep him. Absolutely. I agree. Especially if Oklahoma State ever comes open. Yeah, that would come or, or, or Oklahoma. But we have to, you know, we also have to realize that he may not be number one on their list. You know, he's going to be number one on every list. He may be right. top three. Right. So yeah, there, we there's, a lot of, there's, a, there's a lot of good ADs out there. Yeah. And I mean, he's not great for us, but I mean. Yeah. Wasn't done enough to be considered like the best. You know what I mean? Not yet. No, he's, he's too, early, too early for that. Yet. Yeah, too early for that yet. But he's 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 making huge strides towards that. But yeah, he's he's only been on a job fourteen or fifteen months. So the state of the program is just incredibly. Kelvin Sampson, top of the list for Oklahoma State. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Unless there's some kind of personal tie there, why would he leave? I don't see Houston. I don't see Houston. He almost left Houston last year, but it was for an NBA job, I think. So maybe he's not happy there. I don't, Kellen Sampson. Maybe Who's Kellen Sampson? He probably means Kelvin. But he said it. But he typed it. Oh, his son. His son. Oh. Okay. Gotcha. I, I wasn't familiar with him. My fault. Interesting, man. If they have to, go, if they have to settle for. And I don't mean, I don't mean to throw shade at the young man because he might be a great coach. But their fans are not going to be happy if they have to settle for an assistant. What's up? What, is everybody mad at uh, Bryce Drew for the way he coached the other night? He made some bad calls down the stretch. It was all over the news. I mean, people talked about it. So. Charles yeah, Barkley talked about it for, or Kenny Smith, one of the two, talked about it for like 10 minutes. Um, I was listening to it. I didn't see that. I was in, I was in here cooking. I heard it. They said uh, breaking or, or something about Bryce Drew, the bad calls he made down the stretch of the Grand Kenny game. So I knew, listen, I'm glad we didn't get him, guys. I really felt like that 0-18 record of the SEC where the coaching is better, 
matters, you know. It matters. I don't care if he was to his 30s or not. You can't go 0 at 18 with two lottery picks without being deficient somewhere. I, I don't know. Yeah. Chris Mitchell said it was sparkling. I think I even mentioned that to you, didn't I, Paul? When I, after that game was over, I messaged you and said that some of the coaching decisions were, were strange. You, you might have. Was it was it that game or another one? I, I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. But, I mean, I'm sure you probably did. I think it was that one because it was like he – he didn't. Instead of going for two, he went for went to went for three, and I thought that was stupid. Uh, I think it was that game, but anyway, you did say, you did say that. I, that's I, neither I, here nor there. Uh, Curtis said he came off kind of soft in his press conference. He thought. WV fan thirteen said, "Shout out to the women's team. Grit and toughness was one hundred ten percent. Refs played too much of a role at times. Absolutely, WV fan." 100% agree with you, man. But the uh, foul shooting disparity was 30 to 5. That's all you need to know. Mike did the bandy. Yep. What do you think about that move? It's a good hire. Well, I guess Chris Agreed. Max must have fell apart with him or something. Must have, yeah. I thought um, I thought he was all the lot there. If you're going to get it. Uh, but uh, that's a tough job for Byington. Uh, he, he'll he go to prove himself there. You know, if he wins a you with the Vanderbilt, they'll be on every list in the country. Agreed. With their academic uh, standards that they have there, it's not an easy place to recruit. Yeah. He's probably going to bring his guys with him, you know? Yeah. Sure. I would. The ones that are, the ones that are obviously the ones that are going to have to play at that level. <laughs> Which, I mean, Edwards, well, uh, the one guy's le- uh, graduating, isn't he? Their best player, isn't he a senior? No, not Terrence Edwards. He's not? No, okay. I thought he was. My fault. Uh, well, I mean, it, it, I mean, force of work down was saying over and over again. So I just assumed, to be honest with you. Yeah. Okay. He, he may be a senior. I haven't looked it up. I just thought when I watched the game the other night, they were saying he was and he was, but I, they may have been talking about somebody else. Some of the dumbest basketball I've ever seen is what Charles Barkley said about Bryce Drew, I guess. I don't know what's going on here. I can't get my headphones to charge. All right. No worries, man. I, I, can, I can hear you. I can hear you. No big deal. I can hear you just fine. Right. My stuff's almost dead. We've been on here for an hour. My battery's almost dead and everything. Oh, I know that's that's cool. I'm uh, I'm about ready to jump off here anyway. Do you have anything else you want to say before we call it a night? No, no. I think we pretty much got it all in. Uh, be looking out for more videos about uh, the transfer situation, guys. Absolutely, and there'll be news breaking. I'm sure uh, in the next several days, and we'll try our best to cover it for you guys. Uh, but anyway, we appreciate everybody hopping on here. It's late. It's 11.38 p.m. here on the East Coast, so but we appreciate everybody coming in. Thanks for the support. Proud of the Lady Mountaineers team for the way they played tonight. They honestly at times look like the better team. And uh, excited about what's to come for Western Union's team as well. So we're calling it a night. Thanks to Dutch Miller Automotive for sponsoring us, and we're done. <laughs>